Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Toyota Center here in Houston, Texas, for the featured bout of the evening as Premier Boxing Champions presents our featured bout brought to you by Lions Only Promotions, along with TGB Boxing and Showtime in association with Samson Boxing, and sponsored by MGM Resorts and UBK Entertainment. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC. The president and supervisor for this bout is Mauricio Suleiman, along with the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulations. The chairman is Rick Figueroa. Executive director is Brian Francis. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside, from California, Steve Morrow, from Indiana, Nathan Palmer, and from New Mexico, Chris Tayes. Introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, John Shorley. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Houston, Texas, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, joining us from his home of West Mexico, Mexico. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds, with a record of 22 wins, four losses and two draws, he has all 22 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his Showtime debut and his first attempt at a world title, ladies and gentlemen, here's the hard-hitting WBC number four ranked middleweight contender, introducing Juan Montiel. across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with red and white trim, fighting out of and representing his home of Houston, Texas. He weighed in at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 31 wins, no losses, 22 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in the fourth defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, here is the two-division world champion and the current reigning and defending undefeated WBC middleweight champion of the world, introducing the future of boxing, Jermall Chuck. Let's get a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, John Shorley. Mr. Charlo, Mr. Montiel, this fight is for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Thanks, referee sir. John Shorley, 28 years as a professional, working his 568th professional fight. 27-year-old Juan Montiel stepping up to 12-round status for the first time in this bout. Started boxing at the age of 13. Meanwhile, Jamal Charlo, one of four sets of twins, along with his brother Jamal, who have won world titles. The only two to have held titles at the same weight, 154, and his... Fourth title defense at 160 pounds begins round one. The champion Charlo in the black and red. The challenger Montiel in the black with white trim. The Charlo family, Errol Spence, Houston royalty here in the house of Charlo. Al, we even saw brave Montiel fans sporting a Mexican flag in the crowd. A few of them are here, and Montiel immediately switches to lefty. You'll see him do that in this fight. And I was expecting Montiel to really go in there and and start start fast. Check Charlo's chin, but you know, being cautious. 
there's Charlo with the jab to the body, and and man, he, he really does have a power jab. He has dropped more than one opponent with his jab. Well, he landed seven jabs per round in that excellent performance against Dervianchenko. A minute gone here in the first, and Charlo attacking the body with the jab, splitting the guard with the jab. And it's the way Jamal uses that jab, like you mentioned. It's, it's a power jab, but you could, you could see the jab coming, and next you know it, he lands the uppercut with that same hand. Montiel from a southpaw stance. And in that fight against Munguia, we, we talk about him switching stances, Al, and it uh, proved to be his downfall. It cost him. He was switching in, in the midstream. He got it with a straight right hand and was knocked out. But I think he's being smart now. He's switching at a distance where Charlo could not hit him. And the mistake he made with Munguia, he switched with the punch, and he was countered with that. Again, the jab to the body. Charlo fresh off, for arguably the most impressive win of his career against the credentialed Sergei Dervianchenko, of course. He had that tremendous knockout at 154 pounds. Great feints by Jamal there. Montiel really showing different faces, showing different angles by doing those switches. There's a right hand to the body, left hook upstairs by Charlo. Good bobbing and weaving, although Montiel lands a left. Montiel staying in the pocket, going to the body, and he's just missing with the right uppercut is Charlo. Montiel landed a very nice left hook a moment ago, though. Take a look at the keys for these men, and we'll start out with Jamal Charlo. Um, he want, we mentioned he wants to catch Montiel switching and land the right hand. Now, if he overcommits on his punches, you get caught with a power shot, a left hook like one of the ones we saw landed. The straight right hand is going to be an important punch for him in this fight. For Montiel, when he switches, he squares up his body. That could be an inviting target. He needs to be careful about that. He's got to show power early to keep him in the fight and land something of significance. His counter left hook could be a big weapon. We did see one in round one. Bell and round of number two scheduled for 12 for Jamal Charlo's 160 pound title. Charlo going to the body with the right hand. Montiel from the southpaw stance. Here we see the power puncher. I mean, both fighters are power punchers, but you know, it shows a little bit more on Montel, obviously, because got his 22 wins have been 22 knockouts. Being smart, boxing from the outside, and, and Charlo really just picking his punches. Charlo also has 22 knockouts and 31 victories. 31 and 0. Montel staying left handed for almost this entire round. And now switch finally with two areas. You see, he's tentative sometimes in the switching. Yeah, because if he makes a mistake, oh, he's going to pay dearly. Yeah, Charlo quipped that Montel's going to come forward and give him some power. He's going to put it in his pocket and charge his phone with it. He'll look to put Montel in airplane mode here. And Montel continues to be in southpaw now, momentarily back to orthodox, but along the ropes. Charlo, methodical, stalking. Yeah, and again, guys, doing those switches at a range where Charlo cannot get him. And 
that in the when we've talked about how these fighters are can create knockouts. Obviously, Montiel's not faced the kind of competition, but he has scored many knockouts early, as has Charlo. So don't blink here. Charlo wanted to be careful in this fight and stalk and not overcommit, which he hasn't done. He feels like time is on his side in this match. And and and, and uh, Shields has said he wants his fighter to be patient. And it's like this crowd is just ready to explode. If Charlo's able to make contact, they stumbled, stepped on each other. Well, I think Charlo stepped on yeah. Montiel's foot there and stumbled. Almost, almost made a mistake there, Jamal. But again, again, it was a stumble, but could have cost him too because, again, Montiel has power. Under 30 seconds left in the second round. Jab through the guard, another jab by Charlo. His bread and butter, his calling card, everything comes behind that fundamental punch that he's been working on, honing his skills with respected trainer Ronnie Shields as we come to the end of round two here at the Toyota Center in Houston. Swing and a miss by Montiel as Charlo landed the left. It was an awkward moment, and it had to do with something Abner was kind of talking about, Charlo attacking, and and they, they, their legs got tangled, but he did. Uh, that's what we mean by overcommitting yeah. a little bit. But Montiel, and they banged heads there as well. Montiel was not able to land the counter punch as he stumbled forward. He couldn't get off that left hook. He wanted to try it, and there were the heads banging and, uh, together. And Jermall quick to react, too, with the punch. The double jab right hand and bring the hook back behind that. Okay? You gotta give me threes and fours now. Not just one. Three, two, three, four, okay? That's how I need in that sinker, okay? No one punching now. So Ronnie Shields loves the one, loves the jab, but he would love to see some twos, threes, and fours. Wants to Charlo to start putting together the combinations here as we begin round at number three. Yeah, that's great advice because you don't want to commit just with one punch with the puncher. You know, you commit with one, he makes you miss, he makes you pay. You two, if you throw one, two, three, well, you keep the fighter busy. Well, and Montiel may pay for the uh, gamesmanship, putting himself on the ropes and poking the uh, proverbial bear as it were here as Charlo again works behind the jab. There's a right hand that lands, gets the attention of Montiel in a hurry. Montiel not a jabber by trade and he has only thrown 12 jabs so far in this fight and not landed one yet But he's an awkward fighter. It's what Charlo described him and Charlo already Landing double the amount of punches of the challenger Montiel I'm waiting on that on that hook by my Charlo. He's setting it up with the one two body he still has not let, let go of that overhand right. I'm sorry, that hook. Charlo uh, throwing more jabs, not landing at a huge percentage, but throwing more certainly in this in this fight. You know, there was a moment at the end of the last round where they traded left hooks, and Montiel's got there. I'm not saying it hurt Charlo in any way, but Charlo has to be careful with that hook, not to exchange hooks with him. Montiel trying to parry the jab there. So a left hand from the southpaw. There's a left hand lands. Nice left hook to the body by Charlo. And that forces Montiel to momentarily go back. And now Charlo beginning to open up on Montiel. And Montiel stands in the pocket, bites down on his gum shield. And he's throwing with the champion. Landed a right hand there. I think Montiel's making a mistake by being a lefty so much. Yes. The left yes. hook is his power punch. Throw it as a, as a righty and, and, and get some leverage in it like that. Yeah. Under a minute left in the third. It's when he's as a right-hander that he lands that right hand. When he switches left-hander, he doesn't do much. Yeah, and he, he, he lands the hook when he's yes. a righty too. That's the, the issue. Well, this has been a good action exchange here in this round. There's counter right uppercut by the champion, Charlo. Goes back to work behind the jab, dictating the pace and the terms of this fight. Cuffing right hand. Lance for the champion. 
There's a jab from the Southpaw Montiel that scores. Montiel taking those punches well so far. And Montiel coming back with a series of left. Final 15 seconds. It's been a fun round. Oh, and Montiel lands a left and a right. Then the unheralded challenger staying in the pocket with the vaunted champion Jamal Charlo as we end round three. Let's let him get brave. That's good. What is to get brave? Give me the box. He dropped out of my flow, man. Early in the round, it was Charlo using the jab. They actually exchanged good jabs, and then Charlo going downstairs with the hook to the body, partially blocked. And, you know, Charlo was trying to show power early in that round, and the right hand getting there. And this was a, a good power exchange in which Charlo did get in some pretty good punches, including that straight right. But Montiel hung in there in the round and would have a couple of decent moments, a good left hand. And when he fights as a righty, as he was there momentarily, that left hand can be effective. Round number four for Jamal Charlo's 160-pound belt, making his fourth defense against Juan Montiel, the 27-year-old from Los Mochis, Mexico. Again, in his first scheduled 12-round fight, fighting for a title for the first time, and again, gamesmanship, trying to get Jamal Charlo off his game. One thing Ronnie Shields keeps telling us, Charlo extremely focused, hard to get him off his game. In a way of Montiel trying to get him off his game, again, the switches. Switching softball, switching right hand. But he's got to be careful. He's got to do it again in a distance where he doesn't get countered by Jamal. But there is a good left hands by uh, Montiel as a righty. Yes. It's a mistake to fight the whole round as a lefty, and he's mostly doing that, occasionally switching to the right-handed stance. A minute gone here in the fourth. Left to the body by Charlo. And if you guys notice in this round, Montel changed his whole, uh, his whole game plan. Now he's moving forward. He's pressuring. A little bit low on that body shot, but again, you know, good work there. Charlo has not quite yet been able to get that straight right in the way he likes. That was a nice one to the body. But that's the money punch, I think, yes. for him in this fight. A right hand through the guard by Charlo, but a counter right lands for Montiel before the left hits yes. the jaw of Montiel. Montiel has been taking some shots from Charlo, but keeps coming forward. Stiff jab from Charlo. Under a minute left here in the fourth. Right hand gets through the guard, left hook, and Montiel's eating these shots pretty well, taking the, the power of Charlo here in round four. 45 seconds left in the round. Combinations now being put together by Charlo. Lead left uppercut lands for Montiel, and a right. Both go to the body. This is a good round of action from both ends. Montiel looking to seize the biggest opportunity of his career. One tube splits the guard by Charlo. Coming up after Showtime Championship Boxing, it's All Access, Davis Barrios, an encore presentation of episode two. And one week from tonight, live on Showtime Pay-Per-View from Atlanta, two-division champion Gervonta Tank Davis looks to become a three-division champ. In his second Showtime Pay-Per-View headliner as he faces unbeaten super lightweight champion Mario Barrios, the co 
Maine will see a high stakes 154 pound title elimination between Erickson Lubin and former unified junior middleweight champ Jason Rosario. A quartet of compelling confrontations coming your way one week from tonight. Davis versus Barrios live on Showtime pay-per-view. Man who loves to bring all the smoke, Steven Jackson, NBA champion, 14-year NBA veteran, and yes, the co-host of the Showtime Digital Series, All the Smoke. Charlo averages 47 punches per round, but he is throwing more than that tonight in the 60s so far. Or in the 50s, I should say. Round number five underway. Charlo going back to the jab, beautifully placed. Couple of left hooks. One to the liver, one upstairs to the side of Montiel's face. Now, I would like oh, to see a little hand more. Lands. Oh, and there's a one-two. Charlo beginning to put on the pressure now. And Montiel on inline skates momentarily. And he's been corralled in the corner. Charlo unloading on the challenger, Montiel with the high guard. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Weathering the storm like a parka for now. Electricity here at the Toyota Center in Houston. What's made this fight intriguing is that Montiel has been able to, even though he was withstand, stunned in this yes. round, yeah, he's been able to withstand what Charlo has hit him with and not gone down. And again, though, Montiel finds himself along the ropes. Charlo remains poised, patient, wants to be surgical with his precision. Montiel utilizing his footwork and eats that shot to the midsection. The power punches, you know, landing at 37% for Charlo and Montiel has done virtually nothing with his power punches. Santana landed 48% of his power punches against um, Montiel. Final minute of the fifth, and again, Charlo with a couple of left hands that find the target. Lead right splits the guard of Montiel. Montiel stood there as a righty and countered the left hook of Charlo. He can't do that as a lefty. And while Charlo has been frustrated in his inability to land the, the big fish at 160, the combined record of his last nine opponents, 218, 15, and four. So, taking care of business. Nice right hand of the body and a left upstairs by Charlo as Montiel tries to land a left uppercut. Jamal Charlo really picking his punches well in this round. There are levels to the sport of boxing as we head to round six. And Family affair in that corner. Let him go now. Let him go. Let him go now. The last round, a big one for Jamal Charlo. This is where he stunned with the right hand. And we talked about the fact that that was the money punch for him in this uh, fight. And he did finally get a really good one home. And then he went after Montiel, trying to get him out of there. Montiel was clearly in some trouble, but Charlo could not close the show on him. Round number six, Montiel told us that not all Mexicans just go on attack mode by default. You have to be smart and think things through depending on how the fight goes. And now the corner, Montiel uh, told him that it's time. Yep. It's time to let go of those hands. 
And Montiel now walking forward, eats a right to the body. Well, it would help if they told him to fight the right way, which is as a right-hander. <laughs> that, would, that would be a help, too. Oh, the right hand that landed for Charlo. Now Montiel on the ropes. A crowd on its feet in anticipation of Charlo maybe closing the show, but Montiel... Very early in this round, a lot of time for him to get through. Montiel says, bring it on. Be careful what you wish for. Right hand to the body by Charlo. Two minutes left in the sixth. And Montiel appears to be fading and in trouble. Trying to defend the attack, the left gets through. And it's Jamar Charlo throwing the right punches, not committing too much, not wanting to make a mistake. Yeah, he's doing an excellent job. Of oh, and Montiel unsteady on his feet. Hands are down. Now up the right hand scores. <laughs> like you said, Al, a lot of time. And Charlo remains patient. Comes in looking to land the one, two lands another right hand, another right bounces off the face of Montiel. But Montiel still standing. Oh, he's showing a lot of courage. And now punching and back. Coming back with lefts and then from the southpaw stance a jab. Final minute. Juan Montiel will not go quietly into the night. Montiel got a really good body shot in there. Triple jab by Charlo. Not wasting any punches. Very economical, very accurate. Under 30 seconds left in the sixth. Shoe shine, and then the left hook upstairs by the champion. Do you believe Montiel is getting through this round hurt with only 15 or 20 seconds left in the round? And he's still here. And Charlo's done a very good job offensively. Montiel's only been down once, and that came against Bungia. Now again, rattled, trying to hang on. And perhaps saved by the bell like Bayside, Errol Spence. Close friends with the Charlos here in Texas. He'll face Manny Pacquiao later this summer. But right now, Montiel fighting for his life. Talk about great conditioning. How you feel? You gotta keep your hands up. Counter punch him. Get closer, get closer. You just... Well, early in the round, Charlo was able to hurt him with the right hand, which was a punch we talked about him needing in this fight, and he had Montiel in big trouble. Then toward the end of the round, I believe this is going to be a left hook, but really, they exchanged left hooks. And Char well, Charlo's got there. Montiel wanted to throw his, and the question is, was that minute enough for him to recoup? And again, the conditioning is key here for Montiel. He's being hit hard, a lot of hard by Jamal. And Come that of people that can sustain those punishment is fighters that are in great shape. A lot of pundits expected Montiel to be blown out. Here we are, round number seven. And he has taken some hard shots from the champion, but remains standing even though he is well behind on the scorecards. Caught a little bit of a break because of that water in the corner. Got a little extra time to clear his head. And speaking of scores, our unofficial score, Steve Farhood has Charlo running away with it. And Steve scored round six, a two-point round for Charlo, which is not at all unreasonable, even without a knockdown, because he dominated that round and hurt Montiel. Jab and then the left hook to the body by Charlo. A minute gone in the seventh. And Montiel appears to simply be in the survival mode, not mustering much of an offense. 
along the ropes where Abner, that's, you're, you're asking for it against a guy like Charlo. You are, you are, and you can tell the experience, I mean, from Charlo is really well choosing his punches. And well, one thing that I took from when he fought Dervinchenko and I heard an interview, he said, I give myself an A. But not an A-plus because I did not get the knockout. And I think he's going for the A-plus in this fight. Well, Dervin Chenko. Of course, a different a, class yeah, of fighter of course, than uh, Montiel. But I mean, he's going for the knockout. Yeah, and Dervin Chenko fought a terrific fight against him, even in losing. Well, the, the punch numbers demonstrate, uh, you know, what's going on here uh, in terms of uh, Charlo throwing more, landing more. And, you know, it, he's just done everything correctly. Even that 33%, it's not a monstrous percentage, but it's enough when you're landing big power punches. With a minute left, and while Charlo and putting the pressure on. I'm sorry, Mo, but it, it is what you do against the fighter you have in front of you. And Charlo is doing a fantastic job of choosing his punches, not over committing. Great jab, great body work. And hey, you know, he's taking the few shots here and there as well. But Charlo he shows a great chin. Said he was in a lose lose situation, and obviously the fans here at Toyota would love to see a knockout, but Montiel not making it easy now, coming forward again. And while he's way behind, he is showing guts, but his balance seems to be off. I, his stance is not on point. Montiel has only thrown 15 punches in this round, so he's very fit. Oh, and he got clocked with that right hand from Charlo, but then the left hook and a left from Montiel. Final seconds of the seventh. Charlo continues to attack the body and the head. Doing good, baby. We're doing good. Leave this out for me. Give me a deep breath out of my flow. Put your arms down. Put your arms down. Give me a drink. I got you. Deep breath, baby. Give me a deep breath out of my flow. Give me a dry towel. Everything is good. Stay low. Stay behind your jab. And just keep on your Charlo landing a good variety of punches in this uh, fight. There's a nice uppercut. He has a good uppercut. And then, of course, the right, which has been uh, omnipresent in, in this fight. And for occasionally, as a southpaw, the jab will get in for uh, Montiel, but not that often. Round number eight scheduled for 12 for Jamal Charlo's 160-pound title. An unheralded challenger, Juan Montiel, throwing himself off balance there, but remains in front of Charlo and eating these thunderous shots from the champion. Montiel might not have been in a chance to win this fight in any case, but he reduced his chances to almost zero by fighting as a lefty this yes. whole fight. I can't emphasize that enough. And anybody with an ounce of boxing intelligence should see that. Oh, we have uh, Montel's corner right next to us. I'm sorry, should but I that's just go so tell him that? No, it makes me want to go tell him. Right hook behind the guard by Charlo. Oh. Left uppercut by Charlo. Or, I mean, to emphasize on that, uh, I mean, you're so right. There's no use for him to go soft. No. He just takes punishment when he does. And when he switches right back to right hand is when he's more effective. That's when he can land the left hook to the body and the left hook to the head and, and occasionally a right hand. So, and, but, you know, I guess it's just become a habit yeah, is it, what it is. Exactly. Montiel was dropped and stopped by Jaime Munguia at 147 pounds. Now here at 160, a minute and a half left in the eighth. Eats another shot to the body from Charlo, but then Montiel goes over the top with a short right hand. But, what but he's throwing himself off balance, Abner. His yes. stance is nowhere near that's, textbook. That's how he got caught when, when, when he got knocked out by Munguia. He switched to a left hand stance. But it's right? not even just the switch, like it's just the normal stance. Like he doesn't, that. he's not balanced. When he let go of that left hand is when he got caught with the overhand right from Mugia. And yet the left uppercut and a left hand and another left hand. 
Jill coming back and lands a right hand on Charlo. Madre mia, what is happening here? And now Charlo clips him with the left. Wow, this has turned into some round. <laughs> talk, talk, let's talk about the great conditioning. When Double Avery left uppercut. Well, we talked about this. Yep. Most of the fighters say, hey, I had a great camp. We all say that, but this guy, you, you can tell he had a tremendous camp. Most Train for the fight in Tucson, Arizona. There's a right uppercut by Charlo and Montiel. Continues to walk forward. Left hook to the body by the challenger. What a round here in Houston. Got a flight left up. Give me some water. Give me some water. Spread that out. Spread that out. Spread that out. Spread that out, spread that out Mark. Come on, get down. Spread that out. There he is, right there. Early in the round, Charlo, you landing the, the, the throwing the uppercut on the inside, and it, he's used that weapon very, very effectively. But there was a surprise there, and look, he he started fighting as a righty. Look at what he can do. He's half righty, and he's still able to land that left hand better. And the hook and the uppercut, good punches. And what is he doing? He's fighting as a righty, but he won't do it. That's amazing. Jamal Charlo suffering the first cut of his career on his right eye as we begin round number nine. Lead right hand to the body by Charlo. And again, Montiel continues to fight from the southpaw stance. Much to the chagrin of Al Bernstein. <laughs> I haven't been this fired up about a strategic uh, move in ages. <laughs> You know, Jamal Charlo is more than likely winning every single round in this fight, and he's performed exceedingly well. It's that Montiel has just been courageous and has had some good offensive. But well, you know, if he doesn't get the knockout, what's going to be happening on social media and in the court of public opinion? But I agree, this is why they fight the fights out. Yeah. And it's amazing, I mean, where every fight is different. Here's a guy that was knocked out at 147 by Mugia, and he's bringing the fight to the champion, Charlo. And uh, Charlo's right eye is swelling. First time he's been cut in his career. These last couple rounds have been exciting to watch. Oh, and Charlo slips in the corner. High drama here in Houston as we pass the midpoint of the ninth. And that corner, of course, has been an issue with the wet stuff on the canvas. You can just imagine what your mom is thinking in there. You hit the guy with everything you had. And the guy, keep, the guy keeps coming forward. Yeah, so, uh, Montiel has showed unbelievable grit in this fight. Under a minute left here in the ninth. Charlo looking to reset. Delivers the jab, eats a left hook upstairs, and Montiel. Left hook, they exchange shots. The body work of Montiel has been pretty impressive in some spots. 30 seconds left here in the ninth round. Double jab by Charlo. That right hand down the middle, and Montiel just eats it. Great use of the jab by Charlo walking, walking backwards. Stiff jab by Charlo. There were 
were moments in that round uh, that where Montiel did some good work. Look, gee, where's he fighting as? A righty. And he lands a left hook to the body, an uppercut to the head, and a right hand to the head. So from that stance, he did pretty well for spots. Now, the wet spot uh, over here in the corner, this is where Jamal Charlo, and this is over in the uh, corner of Montiel, he will slip down. Thank goodness he didn't hurt himself or get hit while he was down. And Charlo landed some terrific right hands in that round. And the, here's an example, wide open, uh, you know, off the chest, but uh, he squared, squared up and up. wide open is uh, Montiel there. Juan Montiel has made it to round 10 in his first championship fight. But then again, Montiel has never been a guy that goes the distance. The 22 wins that he has have been by knockout, yeah. and the one loss is was by knockout. <laughs> yeah, he has, has he's never got been three 12. of his four losses have been by split or majority decision. Yeah. Right. But he's never been 12. Never, he's been, never 12. been scheduled for 12. Yeah, exactly. and Charlo's 4 0 is in 12 round fights, so clearly he has a lot more experience going this distance. Nice left hook by Montiel. One-two combination through the guard for Charlo. Montiel continues to walk forward. Charlo has landed at 47% of his power punches, which is everything other than the jab. That's excellent when you land at that percentage. And a mouse under the right eye of Juan Montiel. Oh. Left hook again from the righty stance from Montiel. And a left hook to the body by the champion Charlo and a left hook upstairs that just missed. There's a straight left hand by Montiel from the southpaw stance and then Eats the right through the guard, a double jab followed by the right cross, and now Charlo scores with a couple of one-two combos. And Charlo's seeing everything. If you notice, he's walking in circles. He's in the center of the ring. He's seeing everything, staying off that jab. But it's obviously the, the, the pressure that Montiel, that he's putting, that he will get a hand here and there. Oh, stiff right hand from Montiel and a left. And what I mean by my, uh, Charlo seeing everything, you can tell he's reading his punches. He jabs, he's waiting for him. There it is, oh, the counter punch. A couple of left uppercuts, right cross by Montel. Exchange punches under 30 seconds left in the 10th. These have been entertaining rounds, albeit sometimes one sided ones for Charles. How many people thought that unheralded challenger Juan Montiel would make it to the championship no. rounds against Jamal Charlo? And be exchanging with him like this. And concern on the face of Jamal Charlo's wife. Nobody. In Houston, if you're in the Charlo camp, thought it would make it to the championship rounds. This is not decision. You gotta knock him out. We're not gonna win. We're not gonna win by decision. Go left it now. Go left it. Go. Throw the right hand. Get close to him. Get close to him. Get inside, get inside, get inside. Don't get up. I need three, four punches to get the down. Stop standing right in front of him. Get that head where he's going. Look, and shoot uppercuts. Give me, give me that. Shoot a lot of uppercuts, okay? A sense of urgency in both corners. As the championship rounds are upon us, round number 11, Jamal Charlo, the 160-pound champ, meeting the challenger Juan Montiel in the center of the ring. Well, that was a no-brainer from Montiel's corner. You're losing every round. You got to win by now. Yeah. <laughs> 
So why do you think Abner Montel's made it to the championship rounds in this fight? Again, the conditioning, the well-training, well-prepared for this fight. Well, physically he was well prepared, <laughs> not strategically. No, no, no. But again, that's yeah. why he made it to. That's this, right. Because he took a lot of punishment. Anything that you would like to see the champion Charlo do better in hopes of closing the show here tonight? Um, I mean, it's really hard to tell him or, or, or hope for him to do since it is the 11th round. Both fighters are fatigued. The body does not react the same. But one thing, Charlo, is just stay on that jab. Stay on that power jab. He can win a whole round by a jab. We talk about the experience of Charlo going 12-4-0 and never has Montiel been this far. Or been to the In many top. ways, never has he been yeah. this far. That's for sure. Coming from Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. There's the jab. Unofficial score, Steve Farhood has Charlo pitching a shutout, but Montiel coming on here past the midpoint of the 11th. Wow. Left uppercut, another left hand to the body by Montiel. That body shot hurt him, guys. And left uppercut, another left uppercut scores for Montiel. And you're right, Abner, Charlo's body language has changed. Flashes the jab. And again, it's a body fatigue and mentally also from Charlo. Oh, and then you hit this guy with everything. Every single punch in the book. And he keeps coming. Forty-five seconds left in the penultimate round. Charlo backing up to the ropes, baiting him in, leads with the straight right, splits the guard of Montiel. This is the first round in which show stats at this point in the round has Montiel landing more punches than Charlo, only by one, but it's still something to be said. Yes. And Charlo has thrown almost nearly twice as many punches as the challenger Montiel. 15 seconds left in the 11th. Charlo attacking upstairs. 12th and final round is here in Houston. Spit, spit for me, just spit for me. Just spit. Okay, give me some water. Okay, now let's just keep boxing like that, okay? That's all you gotta do. All we gotta do is keep boxing. Charlo keeps sandwiching these rounds, getting good punches in early and at the end of the round. Also some, of course, in between. But Montiel has had some good moments sometimes inside. Working that left hand and then the right hook. Uh, and, and when he's on the inside, when he throws that left with conviction, he can get it home, and that body shot, I think, had some impact on Charlo. But Charlo, at the end of the round, doing some excellent uh, work and landing. Just a beautiful straight right hand, and it's amazing. That's just like the kind of right hand Mangayo knocked him out with, but Charlo didn't knock him down. Crowd showing their approbation for the hometown hero, Jamal Charlo, and the guts of Juan Montiel, 12th and final round. And while Montiel must be way behind on the scorecards, earning respect for the guts and the character he's exhibiting. And meanwhile, Charlo now working the one-two off the back foot. And the fascinating part is Montiel coming forward. Yep. He's taking punches, but he's coming forward. It's just astonishing. And it almost seems that E.E. E. is going home happy knowing that he took oh. Charlo the 12 rounds. Well, well every single my round. Two minutes and 13 seconds left in the round. Every single round that Montiel will go to his corner, he will raise his hands like if he won the round. Which obviously he didn't, but he was just, he's happy that he's in this fight. When he's doing some things offensively, which is probably, you know, bowing his spirit. And Montiel continues to bring the fight to Charlo. Charlo able to counter effectively, staggers him with the right hand before Montiel comes back. Montiel lands 
Finds another right. Charlo. Leaning in. Last 90 seconds of this 160 pound title affair. Not many pundits expected Juan Montiel to go the full 12 round distance with a man many believe to be the best at 160, Charlo. But this is why we hold the fights and Juan Montiel now a minute away from going the distance with an undefeated middleweight champion in his first title shot. And the crowd wanting to rally Charlo. Man Montiel continues to throw punches. There's a right from Charlo. It's been a long time since we had a crowd like this. Let them take you through to the end of this fight. Chantel Charlo applauding the efforts of her husband, Jamal Charles Errol Spence Jr. Watching on. Nobody expected this one to go the distance, Abner, but Juan Montiel, while being outfought, he, he proved that he has as much heart as anyone. He surely did. And, and one thing I wanted to say was that it was a clean fight, guys. There was no holding. There was no grappling. It was it was a clean fight from both ends. Uh, Montiel fought a, a courageous fight. Did not win two. In my luck, he did not win any round. If anything, one round. But just fought courageously, fight and and, and great conditioning. Errol Spence uh, shaking his head when we saw my camera and shaking his head. I think because of the grit of Montiel and the fact that he was able to go yes. the full uh, round. <laughs> he had a Errol had a quizzical look, like man, that guy won 12 rounds, and it was pretty and astonishing. You know, questions will be asked about okay, with everything going on in Jamal Charlo's life this week, uh, building up to this homecoming defense and all of the other responsibilities. You wonder how much that does end up impacting, not taking anything away from Montiel as we, and you know, I mentioned it at the top of the show, right? This is, this is what he's been through this week. It's been a very busy, very important week, but at the end of the day, his business is getting down to business in the squared circle. And tonight against Juan Montiel, Charlo forced to go the 12 round distance. And we'll look back at this fight with inside the ropes in microcosm and, and take a look at how the this fight went on. And, you know, Charlo was from the beginning throwing good combinations, landing the straight right, which we felt was a key in this match, plus the, the left hook and a good variety of punches from Charlo, which we're used to. Jamal Charlo is a complete fighter. There's no question about that and always gives you a complete arsenal. And he, for the most part, was able to do what he wanted to offensively. But there were moments in this fight where Montiel was able to get his offense in as well. And uh, here you see him from the right-handed stance, and I, I have to say it because that's where he was effective, landing the jab, the uppercut, and when he was righty, he was able to get downstairs. See, look, he turns right-handed, and look what he does. He lands a good combination. But Charlo was able to, uh, again, use a variety of punches. The uppercut was a very important weapon. And finally, uh, Charlo was able to get the job done. Does uh, Juan Montiel have a carbon fiber gin? Yeah. Have we uh, investigated that oh as we my. look at show stats? Charlo landing 46% of his power punches. Everything other than the jab is what that is. Very impressive. And, uh, you know, that more than anything else is uh, jumps out at you from those numbers. Plus, he was a little busier than he normally is, throwing 769 punches.
All right, time to get the official decision. Here once again is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, the judges are in agreement here are the score totals. Judge of side, Nathan Palmer scores the bout 118 to 109. Steve Morrow sees it 119 to 109. And Chris Tejas scores the bout 120 to 108. All three in favor of the winner. And still, the undefeated WBC middleweight champion of the world, Jermall Charlo. Hometown fans and his wife, Chantel, getting the result they desired as Jamal Charlo improves to 32 and 0, successfully defending his 160-pound strap for the fourth time.